Welcome back to another video, my friend. I'm Blake, and you're you, and this is a mono red deck built entirely around Torolf, the God of Fury. So let's start taking a look at this card and breaking down the deck card by card. Torolf is a 4-mana 5-4 out of Kaldheim, legendary god creature, has trample, and here's the key word we're building around. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Torolf deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. So effectively, it's giving all of your damage spells trample that you get to point at any target you want while you have Torolf on the field. So of course, we want a lot of ways to deal non-combat damage. So the obvious ones are in our removal package, starting off with four Dragon's Fire. This is a two mana instant that gets to deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker. But if we reveal a dragon card, we get to deal damage equal to that card's power instead. So this is only a combo with Terror of the Peaks. It's still a two mana lightning bolt on its own, which is great, but it pairs extremely nicely with the Terror of the Peaks, which can make it deal five damage if we have this on the battlefield or get it in our hand even. Now with Tor Toroff, there's a lot of things you can KO with that five power, or that 5 damage, and you're going to get to trample that damage over, and it's incredible. Now, Terror of the Peaks is also a combo, because it itself, on the battlefield, gets to deal non-combat damage. Spells are opponents that cast, that target Terror of the Peaks, cost an additional 3 life. This is kind of the original ward, before ward was a thing. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, Terror of the Peak deals damage equal to that creature's power, equal to any target. So, it gets to start shooting damage around on its own, and is an amazing combo piece with tore off the center of our deck now we do of course have a couple more ways to do damage that we're running two demon bolt uh getting four damage is a great number there's a lot of things that you can hit for three damage and get a little bit of trample over which is incredibly good and then we also that are running as a very top end game winner crackle with power the strixhaven giant sorcery for five mana we get to deal five damage up to one target, but if we can get even to eight damage or eight mana, we get to deal 10 damage to two targets. And so that gets absolutely insane with Torolf and is just an automatic game winner essentially because you get to put all that damage on top onto other things and move around and it's absolutely incredible. Now, a couple other combos of the deck. Oh, also, we are running for Bone Crusher Giant. This is a small little shock, the uh, two mana, two damage stomp. That is just a great creature on top, and it's really good in the games, even when you don't have Torov. So it just makes a lot of sense in the deck. Now, just a couple other things for some card advantage. We're running Fable of the Mirror Breaker, two of them, because it just does a little bit of everything. It can discard and draw you cards. It makes that creature that creates treasure tokens. It's just an all-around extremely good card for red. Also, to light up the stage, we have Burn. It makes perfect sense. Is great card advantage for the deck. Also, a fun one we get to run in this deck is the Flame Channeler. You might not be familiar with this. It's a pretty unknown, uncommon, in my opinion opinion. It's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two human wizard, and whenever a spell you control deals damage, we get to transform it. We obviously have a lot of spells that want to deal damage. And then the flip side, you have a 3-3 three -three now for 2, and whenever you cast a spell that deals damage, you get to put a flame counter on it, and you can pay 1 to remove a flame counter to exile the top card of your library and play that card this turn. So this is another little card draw engine. It's a pretty good threat on board when it becomes a 3-3. Three -three in terms of you're going to get a lot of value out of this if your opponent doesn't deal with it quickly. We're also running two Burning Tree, or four Burning Tree Emissary, just because it's really good to play this turn two and slap something else down on top of it. And then last but not least, we have three Gold Hounds on the top end to help us ramp into some things, and then two Torbran to increase all of that red damage. I think 24 lands is the right amount to go. I'm running 20 Mountains, one Spike Field Hazard, just because it is a spell that deals damage. It can tr trigger our Flame Channeler. We don't really get to do fun things with Toroff with it, but it kind of just fits the deck. One Kazol's Fury, because we can sacrifice something like a Terror of the Peaks for a game winner if we need to. And then two Shatter Skull Smashing, because it's dealing damage and it's exactly the kind of thing our deck is looking to do. Now, before we jump into to some gameplay, I do have one request for you. I'm trying to grow this channel to open up my community tab, but to do that, I need 500 subscribers. We're slowly climbing towards that, and I know that subscribing doesn't really mean that much on YouTube anymore. I don't really use it myself to create a personalized feed or anything, because the algorithm is so good, but it would mean a lot to this channel and to help me if you would hit that subscribe button, even if you don't plan on watching every single video. So now without any further breakdown or commercials, let's jump into some games and see if Torolf is good enough to hang on the ladder in Explorer. Okay, jumping into our first game, 
on the draw. Pretty awkward that we don't have any early game plays. And so we're probably supposed to mulligan this hand. So let's go ahead and do that. I think mulliganing this hand is correct without any early plays. This is a little bit better. Uh, we do have the two lands that can go into an emissary into a flame channeler. I do feel better about that. And then I think Crackle with power just takes too much mana to, to really care about in the opener. So I think we go with this right here. We see the very cool little dragon flying in to start the game from our opponent, Oscillator77. Good luck to you, Oscillator. And it looks like we're going to be going against Mono Blue Spirits. Probably don't have a great matchup on this deck, especially being on the draw. They're probably going to be able to get out a bunch of good stuff ahead of time. Get some big, unblockable, hexproof shenanigans going on. So this will be probably a pretty tough matchup. But we'll see if we can hang and how they do it. So already they're out of range from our stomp, which is pretty unfortunate. But luckily, we do get to put down two creatures here, which will let us double block if we need to, if they don't have much else to do. So we'll go ahead and see uh, what they're interested in doing here on their third turn. If we don't draw a land, it's also pretty awkward. We're put in a pretty uncomfortable position here. Whiskey. Stop. Sorry, my dog is causing a ruckus trying to play. We just went on a walk, so he should be fine, but he's all excited. Hold on. I'm actually going to let him out. Be right back. Okay, the dog was fine, and now we are fine, and now the question is, what do we do? We could drop down a hammer just as a play, and since we have another Toroff, I like that, I think. The other option is to hold up the Bone Crusher Giant, which would flip the Flame Channeler, which is good for us, if they play a small, flashy spirit. I actually think I like that more. The hammer's not that good. You have to unattach it. Um, and pay a bunch of mana every time you do it, only to deal three damage. So I think we're actually just going to pass and hold up a stomp and hope that's enough. L uh, luckily, uh, so we missed land drop, but so did our opponent. So that's getting pretty awkward. Now this is pretty good because I think it's probably worth stomping even this little Spectral Sailor. Keep the spirits off the board as much as possible. So I think that's good. And that's backbreaking. Okay. It's fine. We're going to have to get that out of the way some way. Okay. Luckily, we have another stomp, but they probably have another way to protect it. So this is all pretty sad for us at the moment. Yeah, I think not drawing our lands is just really backbreaking in a hard matchup, especially to be on the draw anyway. So I think we're really going to be in trouble, especially now that they have two mana up. I doubt they're going to let me stomp the Spectral Sailor. They've probably got another one mana play. And if they do have the protection, I probably just give them this game. Okay, we are going to go ahead and just give them this game. I think we can't deal with those flying uh, blockers. So uh, let's just get it up. Get another one. Okay, looking at our opening hand here, I think is pretty acceptable. We can put down the Fury tapped, and then we get lands two and three. We can go Burning Emissary turn two, and even stomp something if it makes sense. And we are on the play, so this is quite a decent start for us. Hopefully we can get into a Torolf, but Double Torbrand, not my favorite. There's only two in the deck. Uh, you really just want one after you get your Torbrand set up, but he's still just a solid, good threat of a card that works well with all the things we're trying to do. So not terrible to have one. Just having two in the opener is a little unfortunate, to be perfectly honest. So let's see what we're going up against here. It looks like we're playing some sort of... Um, Grixis deck. We see the, see the thought seize, so we'll probably hit that emissary, I would guess. Is unfortunate for sure. But we'll be alright. We can hold up our stomp and play the threats. Okay, interestingly enough, I guess they don't care about the emissary. Hopefully we'll draw into a two drop here. Uh, that's actually kind of fine. That will work. Death Touch Lifelink 
is pretty obnoxious. And then we get to use this free mana to go ahead and hit with the Dragon's Fire. I think that's pretty fine. And now we're just kind of actually going to take more of a control stance here, I think. Okay. Sure. And they get to put probably Xander onto the field. Yep. Okay. I think we can handle that. We're going to discard one of each of these. Now, this is pretty unfortunate. Maybe we can't handle that. That's pretty good. We don't have any actual kill spells, so that's when we just lose, probably. And they still got a 6-6 on turn 3. That's pretty tough to come back from, even though the discarding and the milling is not that fantastic. 6-6 six, six, turn 3 is pretty tough to deal with. And they got this Death Touch Lifelink guy out here. Alright, land would be fantastic, though. Land could potentially help us claw back. Whenever Lord Xander attacks, we're going to mill half our library. So, that's pretty wild. The blood is the life. Okay, sure. Go right ahead. Now see, they also don't have much on board, so... There goes half our library. That's pretty fun. Show me a land. Alright, we're going to concede again, because this is not fun. Okay, we've got a good bit of interaction here. We can foretell the Demon Bolt to set that up, and then turn three Fable, and then hopefully turn four Torolf. I think this is a pretty solid start. Even though we are on the draw here, that's totally fine. It looks like we're going up against red, blue, green. So we've got some teamer shenanigans going on. Um, could be the elemental deck with the Orion in the sideboard. Could be four color Omnath. Not exactly sure, but we shall see. We shall see what we're going against here. Okay, uh, this is probably Transmogrify. So, Transmogrify cost four. So we probably need to be prepared to Transmogrify to hit this with something. So I think the play is, we'll just get rid of this now, take away the Transmogrify target. So we're going to do this, and then we're going to use that extra damage to go ahead and Dragon's Fire here. Because if they Transmogrify next turn into an Agent, we just lose. That's way too early. So we got to be prepared to keep those off the board, I think. I think that's the play. What are you interested in doing here, Havoc? I feel like I've played this person before. I feel like I've played this person before, for sure. Okay. They've got their four mana now. So far, it looks like they're straight teamer. Love some growth spiral. Good card, good card. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and attack. See what happens. And then I think after this, I'm pretty fine to play the Fable because they don't have any targets out to hit Transmogrify. Next turn, they're probably going to be looking at five mana. So doing the four mana Transmogrify play plus getting a creature out that they can hit, a non token creature, uh, seems pretty hard. They would have to have specifically like a Lovestruck Beast or something. And that seems unlikely. So we're going to go ahead and play our Fable. I think we're safe to do that now. And then next turn, we can have the Demon Bolt and the Stomp as options to hit whatever they want to transmogrify. So I think we're in a pretty good position here. Now, it will be tricky to get out Torolf very early because, like I said, we're wanting to hold up the mana to stop the transmogrify play that I'm pretty confident is coming. That's fine. We didn't really need the treasure. So we'll take that. And... It actually got rid of the treasure, so that's kind of nice in this case. Uh, so we know exactly how much mana they're working with. 
They need to find another land to even have Transmogrify mana. Um, or Chariot mana. Char Chariot's very popular in this deck, I think. Okay. Narset. I think that should be fine. I think that's fine. It will make our discard from Fable next turn not valid. Um, but that's okay. We're, we're okay enough with our hand. We're happy enough with it. We'll go ahead and attack right here. Knock this down to one. And then, see, I want to put out Torolf. And I think that's probably the best play because they're gonna Courier next turn. So if they play a land, they're at five. And if they play the Courier, they'll be at three plus this would be four. So they will actually have enough. If they play land and the Briefcase, they'll have six total mana to do. Basically, they'll have enough for Briefcase and the transmogrify so i think we actually need to prepare for that so we're gonna foretell and we're gonna go into tour off much later in the game um and that's okay i think that's fine we gotta we gotta plan for the worst because a transmogrify into an agent is just extremely backbreaking and i think we have to play around that i think we do okay See what they've got. Chariot makes perfect sense. Um, now is it worth hitting one of these? Probably, so that they can't. It's probably worth hitting one of these with the stomp. They do also now have a perfect target. We will go ahead and stomp this thing, just to keep that chariot from activating very easily. Now, if we draw even one land, I would feel confident. If we would have hit even one land... Now, I think I want to turn on light up the stage here. One land would have made me feel confident to hold up this Demon Bolt and put out Torolf. But without that, I'm not feeling that confident. Let's see. I would actually love to take this trade. Take away their target for the Transmogrify. And now that there is no target, I feel a lot more confident... I think I feel confident now to play the tour off. I think that's the good play. Because they would have to put down Briefcase, and I guess that's still the same play of Briefcase into Transmogrify if they have a land, but they miss land drop, so we're just going to play slightly risky and tap out, and if they've got the play, they've got the play. But we're going to make them have exactly that specific thing in hand. Okay, Fire Prophecy is probably kind of good. Uh, that means they're not going to be making the big play. Sadly, it looks like the music just turned off. Um, so, Arena kind of sucks on music right now. Very sad. A lot of people are having the same problem. So, I apologize if it sounds a little boring and lame. Oh, it looks like it's back. Okay, great. Fantastic. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I am feeling pretty good. Now, I really want to deal damage to them so that I can light up the stage. Okay, yeah, we have to make them lose life. I think that's still the better play. So we're going to do that. We are going to hit them in the face so that we get to light up the stage. Perfect, I love that. And then we're going to put down Emissary. And then we're going to use the Emissary to foretell for free. So now we have double Demon Bolt up. And this is whenever a creature or planeswalker, an opponent gets hit, we get to do the thing. So, if they play anything with three power, we can demon bolt the Narset, deal the over the over damage three onto this extra creature they're going to make, and just absolutely go insane. I love it. Okay, this will also still work. They have some pretty art on the reflection. Good for them. That's fine. We get to actually get rid of both of those things. They don't have... Okay, so they're actually going to put down a new one, so that's totally fine. The focused and disciplined encounter no obstacles. If they use it, we get to KO it. So that's great. So let's do that now, while they have no mana up, just because we can. And then Torolf gets to deal that extra damage, and I want to deal that extra two to the Narset. Lovely. And so that will be down to one again. And now Burning Tree can take care of that for us. Perfect. 
Okay, now we have to stomp now if we want to do the stomp. So we'll go here and here. And yeah, I think a stomp to the face is fine. This one we can only play until end of turn and then we've still got a demon bolt up. I think that is totally fine and this should be a game winner pretty much no matter what. So very good showing for the deck. I think it really works. Um, if you know the matchups and you play correctly, now we didn't even see a transmogrify, but we were ready for it. So I think that we were really prepared well for this matchup and I was really happy with the way the deck played. To see if they're going to make one last hurrah. You can have a Fires of Invention. Now, I think I could actually make... Okay, it does have to be something an opponent controlled. But before this happens, I think they can try to steal Torolf. We can deal damage here. And then the excess damage can go... Only one excess damage, sadly. Um, but we're so close, and it's tapped. So I think we get to... Just swing in with the Emissary and win. Okay, very cool. Let's get another one. The deck works. I think with this opener, we can keep it. A lot of interaction. A Bone Crusher Giant alone can put in a lot of work. And the Spike Field has... Okay, I do hate getting Thoughtseize turn one. It's pretty sad, but we'll see. They'll probably hit the Giant as the right play. But luckily, we've still got a good amount of interaction up and things we can do about that. So I think we'll still be okay. Uh, but that is a little unfortunate. We're actually going to put down the Gold Hound. Try to turn on this light up the stage next turn to make up for the lack of tempo we're going to have without the Bone Crusher Giant. I'll have two options next turn. If they play a dangerous creature, I can just hit it with the Dragon's Fire if it's something I'm very worried about. I'm not very worried about that. Um, hmm. It's an interesting choice. Spike Field Hazard gets to actually trade with this, which is kind of nice. And I think we're going to get to draw this turn with the light of the stage. So I think we're going to toss a mountain. I think that's the way to go here. So let's do that. And then let's light up the stage. Amazing. We get this land. Perfect. And then do I need this as a fourth land? That is my big question mark at the moment. I don't have to decide right now. So let's go ahead and pass. See what happens. Next turn we can Fable, which is great. Thought sees again. They're probably... If they would be willing to take the Spike Field Hazard, I would be willing to give it to them. Actually. Spike Field Hazard also is a nice combo with the Flame Channeler, because it turns it on. So I'm not sure what they're going to take here, but we'll see. Okay, they do take the Channeler. That makes a lot of sense to me. Jeez. All right, now we will get rid of that Spike Field Hazard. Uh, we're playing a discard deck. Because once they're on the field, they're not so much of a problem anyway. But they will be perfect targets for Torolf later down the line. So we are going to go ahead and Fable, just because that's our most efficient play right now. And then we're just going to hold off. We don't want to let them sack the Disciples to take our Gold Hound. We might want to ramp with it later. Okay, looking for some interaction here coming up. Um, they're playing a discard deck, so they just want to be top deck war with us. But I think we can handle that pretty well. I do. Especially if we eventually find Torolf. That's fine. Um, this looks very much like a deck you might have just watched on my channel. This is probably built around Turgrid. So, Brett, Brett Suo, if you saw my... Ooh, now I really want to be super aggressive and dig for that mountain to get Torolf out right now. We're going to do it. <clears throat> That's unfortunate, but okay. We can live with that. We'll foretell this. And I'd be willing to trade this for your Playcrafter. I would. Yes, they'll take that trade. Makes sense to me. Perfect. Really hoping for a land. If we get Torolf out, I feel like Torolf will just obliterate this deck. Other than the fact that they can make us sacrifice it pretty easily. But Fable's going to be a second sacrifice protection target, so that will be nice. So we'll see if we can worm our way out of this one. Oh my gosh. This is insane. They hit three Thought Seizes out of the five cards they've played. How ridiculous. It's not very fun. 
Yeah, you gotta hit Toroff here. I mean, that's the whole giant thing. Makes sense. All right, well, these decks are very boring to play against, uh, but I think we can handle it. I think we can handle it. Of course, we find our mountain now. Um, we've got so much interaction, though, we'll be okay. It would be nice to play down something to get to use the reflection with. Um, that would be pretty great. If they want to fire up the eye, we can kill that totally fine. Um, we'll go ahead and use this just to get our values worth because we're going to have to discard it anyway. Demon Bolt, amazing in this matchup because we get to protect it by foretelling it. So that's wonderful. Same thing with Bone Crusher we, if we draw that. Oh, okay, luckily we do have the treasure. So that actually is going to be our saving grace. Um, that is the kind of card that can win you the game. A terror can certainly do that. Um, as long as they don't draw something to make us sacrifice the most expensive card. If they draw like a Soul Shatter, that'll be really sad. Um, but we are putting a lot of pressure on them to draw something quite good on this turn. Because we're going to get to start copying Terror of the Peaks. And that's going to trigger Terror of the Peaks and get to deal 5 damage all the way around. And it's going to be a pretty awesome little combo unless they can get rid of it on their next turn. Or right now. So pressure is on you, Bretsuo. Pressure is on you. Okay. I'm very curious if they are playing Turgrid. Okay, Blast Zone. That makes sense. Good card. Uh, they're going to lock Thwain. Yeah, they're digging for an answer. Makes sense. Uh, we probably get to win now. Because we're going to double Terror of the Peaks. I think that's just an L for them now. Cool. Great. Love it. And then we just do this, make a copy of Terror, which comes in and deals 5 damage to their face, and then we swing two flyers at them. So that's perfect. Good game. Really rolling. Let's go ahead and get another one. Good game, Bretsuo. Okay. Double Shatter Skull is fine, because that gets us three lands. Um, we have a turn two Dragon's Fire. Crackle with Power in the opener isn't great, but it's fine. We haven't got to pull off that combo yet today, so that would be pretty cool. Um, going first is great, though. I think this deck is pretty good on the play. Uh, you get to hold up a lot of interaction and play with their small creatures, and then wait for your big, booming, powerful combo kinds of cards. So we guarantee set up the Fable with the double Shatter Skull land side into Mountain. So I think we're in a pretty decent position here with the opening hand. Let's just see what our opponent is wanting to do. They apparently are thinking very hard about this mulligan. Sometimes it do be pretty boring out here on the arena. You're just sitting, waiting for your opponent to make a play. Luckily, the music is back, so that's nice. I'm not sure what's happening. I feel like this is going to be something where we just sit here until they play. I'm just going to make a cut if they eventually come back to the game. And if they don't... Okay, our opponent has eventually returned or timed out. So we're going to see if we actually get to play some magic here. Um, hopefully they were just messing with us, and we actually get to play the game, and we're not wasting our time. Let's see. The clock is ticking on our opponent here. I still feel like this is not going to be a game that actually makes it to the video, but we'll see. I might make another cut. Wow. All right, our, apparent it, our opponent is apparently here. So we're going to pay three life, and then we're going to just foretell this demon bolt, see what they're trying to do. And then playing for that turn three Fable Mirror Breaker, I guess we are really playing somebody here. So they're playing Obscura, which is another word for Esper. Quite curious to see what they're going to be playing here. Duress? Sure. Hit my Fable. How sad. Seems like we're just playing nothing but black decks that makes us just want to discard today. Okay, Dragon's Fire? Sure. You take that Dragon Fire. I would love that, actually. That's fantastic. They must be really worried about removal, though, so... Um, could be a Grease Fang deck, that's why I see for Esper a lot. Could just also be some sort of Esper mid -rangey thing. I'm not too sure. Um, running Duress, wow. Alright, take that Crackle with power, power now. Sure. That is fine. What do I want? I want mana to do the things. I'm gonna have four mana this turn with the treasure which will let me play Torbran. But I also want to be able to hold up some interaction now. I really would like to draw into my lands. 
I think we just do zero and just hope to hit our lands. I'm pretty sure is right. I like all of these cards that we've got going for us. And I think we're just waiting to draw lands. They also have no threats on board, so we can play slow. That's totally acceptable right now. I think we just foretell this, save our treasure, and then next turn we'll have some fun stuff to potentially do. If they are playing Grease Fang, it'll be great to hold up this interaction. Okay, definitely Grease Fang. That's pretty much the only deck that runs Parhelion. So I'm glad we held up the interaction, because Grease Fang could be coming down right now. Um, respect to this person playing very budget Grease Fang with Tranquil Cove, Scoured Barons, and the Obscura Storefront. I love it. I love making decks work on a budget. Sure, you got it. Blood Chief's Thirst. That'll do it. Uh, but now we're pretty much going to have to hold up mana for these Demon Bolts the rest of the game. But that's fine. We've seen. We can play around that totally fine. Um, would love to draw into that fourth and fifth land to get these threats out. Uh, but that's okay. We're fine. We're chilling. We are totally fine. We can win this slow game against this opponent. Um, because Demon Bolts, especially two of them, are going to wreck their strategy. So I think we're fine. Even if they put down the Ledger Shredder, that's probably worth hitting with the Demon Bolt, I would say, since we have two of them, and we're pretty confident that we get to take them out. Um, so Ledger Shredder would probably be worth hitting with the Demon Bolt right out the gate. Unless they had mana to potentially go uh, Ledger Shredder into a Grease Fang that we'd hold up until the end of the turn, but still Demon Bolt at the end of the turn. Uh, just to make sure that it doesn't get too big to KO, as it has that pretty big toughness that's hard to get around with the burn spells. There's Grease Fang. It's totally fine. We're not afraid of you. We're going to Demon Bolt you right away. Perfect. And we get to Transform, which is lovely. We will pass. Pass my turn. Okay. Now, is there any way to draw another card? Not really. So we're just going to hang out right here. I think I would rather save the treasure for a Terror of the Peaks play. So I'm not going to put down Torbrand right now. I think we're kind of fine chilling. We've got that Demon Bolt. We're ready to go. Can this hit a Planeswalker? It sure can. I think we're going to... Uh, okay. Do we hit this to turn on the Embodiment of Flame? That's risky. That is risky. I think we save the Demon Bolt for, for Grease Fang. Nothing they do is really that scary except for Grease Fang. So I think it's correct to just hold on. Hold the line. Don't get greedy. We'll, we'll get rid of this next turn. They can hit the Embodiment of Flame. That's fine. I guess that's fine. We'll just draw into our mountain slowly. It's okay. We're still in the lead, in my opinion. Uh, we have to hit those mountains eventually. Um, I would think that. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our two damage for free and hang out there, just waiting to hit another Grease Fang. Or a mountain, even. A mountain would actually be lovely. But I, th I still think we're in a great position. No matter what they do here... Uh, we get to put a lot of pressure on this Kaito this turn. Uh, if they make the Ninja, then we're fine. Um, they are out of destroy range this turn unless they play a Grease Fang, which would be awesome because then we get to kill this and make this bigger and get Kaito. Ooh, Rafine. Is that worth hitting? Well, it's Ward 1, so we would have to sack our treasure, so I'm not willing to do that. It's an interesting play. Let's put down a Burning Tree. Let's make a copy of the Burning Tree to net one mana. Okay, we've now got four to work with. That will do. It holds up our Demon Bolt. And now, either of these will kill the Rafine with the Torbrand out. So I think that was a fantastic little play by us. Thank you very much. I will take a bow. They're not even ready for the Torbrand play. I hope that still counts as red. I think it does. Perfect. I don't see how they come back from that. That was an awesome little combo we had. That was just really cool. And then we've got the Demon Bolt if they do draw into the Grease Fang. And we've got 4, 8, 12, exactly 16 on board. So if they don't play a threat or get rid of the Tor brand, we just get the dub. Love it. Yeah, it's looking good. Even I think I think we're good. I think we're in the clear. Very cool. Very cool. Ooh, that one life is actually going to matter, guys. That is going to put them in safe range by one. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. All right. But that is going to be enough damage. So, unfortunately for them, 
the spike field hazard is actually going to get them. I do believe this can do any target. Great game, Jeff. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this silly shenanigan of a game. If you enjoy the Explorer content, please consider subscribing. And thank you for joining me for this video. I will see you in the next one, my friend.